imminent rain, <laughs> which looks like it's going to start any time now. It's started and stopped a few times, so it's a little tight in here right now because I moved everything kind of closer towards the door, so if I need to move off the porch, I can take what needs to be removed from the rain and protect it and go inside and spend some time as I always do <laughs> on the computer. Where else would I be? No, I do other things too, but there are some people that wonder whether or not I'm on there 24-7, which no, I'm not. But I do enjoy the time that God gives me to communicate, you know, through technology or through personal contact or... I don't like phones anymore because I've been on them too many years. But spending time with Jesus daily, face to face, you know, so to speak, with you and with Him, causing me to go through these, you know, in a devotional way, gives me a blessing that, you know, is indescribable. I can't imagine whether weather or whatever, <laughs> I can't imagine not doing it now. It's like you begin a relationship and you're so in love you just can't live without that person and that's the way it should be you should be looking forward to your time of devotion or emotion or emotion or however you want to call it to oh it's so cool i just i love it i can't wait to do it you know and i can't wait to be there and i know i know god's waiting and he's going to say something to me you get excited and you go oh, yeah let's check it out what god what are you going to tell me and for me, <laughs> pretty much keeps me safe from what's going on in the world, but maybe for you it's something else. For me, it's uh, time to hear Jesus speak, because sometimes he does, and I expect him to. And maybe for you it's just listening and thinking about things until he does take that moment when he breaks through your own understanding and blows your mind. <laughs> with revealing himself. The direction of discipline. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. Matthew 5.30 Jesus did not say that everyone must cut off the right hand, but if your right hand offends you in your walk with me, cut it off. There are many things that you are perfect. There are many things that are perfectly legitimate. But if you are going to concentrate on God, you cannot do them. Your right hand is one of the best things you have. But, says Jesus, if it hinders you, if it stops you from following his precepts, cut it off. This line of discipline is the sternest one that ever struck mankind. There's no escaping the bluntness of its truth. <coughs> There's no denying the reality of its precept. There's no compromising of what exactly is being said here. Jesus is real. He is saying a fact. When God alters a man by regeneration, by being born again, the characteristic of the life to begin with is that it is maimed. There are 101 things you dare not do, things that to you and in the eyes of the world that knows you are as your right hand and your eye. And that unspiritual person says, so what's wrong with that? How absurd you are. There never has been a saint yet who did not have to live a maimed life to start with, things they wanted to do but they could not do. But it is better to enter into life maimed and lovely in God's sight than to be lovely in man's sight and lame in God's. In the beginning, Jesus Christ by his Spirit has to check you from doing a great many things that may be perfectly right for someone else, but definitely not right for you. Seeing that you do not use your limitations to criticize someone else. It is a maimed life to begin with. But in verse 48, Jesus gives the picture of a perfectly full and functional life. You shall be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You know, Chambers was talking about 
the bluntness of how you enter into being a Christian and you have to not do some things that you want to do and he was spiritualizing what Jesus said I don't I know for me that I have seen and I have read and I know too much to say that Jesus did not mean what he said and said what he meant if I really considered that this hand bluntly that I could not and God could not and that together him and I would not accomplish that which he's doing in me which is the perfecting of my body if I thought this was really hindering me then as sure as I'm sitting here I'd take a knife and I'd cut it off because for me my salvation is more important than the realization of being able to use this hand or not use it and God took me to a place where I literally lay in bed unable to do anything because he wanted to be everything to me and that's my salvation that is my salvation that's what I look forward to when I die not this body I live in because we do sin and that's not what Jesus is saying he's saying if it is something that is continually causing you to sin cut it out if you're on the internet and you continually are watching porno cut it out stop the internet if it can't stop you need to eliminate it completely from your life if it keeps continuing for instance to give you an example what if a child molester cannot stop and he's a Christian I would say cut it off I would say even self naming would be an option that he should do if he really can't stop now I believe that God can heal anyone I believe that everyone is made new I believe that there is salvation that comes from God returns to God and that the Holy Spirit can cause a person to be a new creation that old things are passed away and all things have become new and that he can turn this sinful body into a dead body that no longer is controlled by the sinfulness of the flesh but is ruled by the works of the Spirit which is us living and breathing and moving and having our being in Christ but at some point in time if that was the case that I would have said look if you can't stop you need help and you need to seek what it is that God is teaching you to do so the person that literally needs that reality check I would say don't do it but I would say go to all help that you can find because God is serious about sin if you need to be in counseling go to counseling if you need to be in therapy go to therapy if you need to have a brother with you 24 7 have one because your salvation is more important than your sin and indulging in sin will only lead you literally as Chambers said if you're indulging in that kind of sin you'll wind up in hell now everybody does stumble and everybody does fall and everybody sins and everybody commits sin but that's not what Jesus meant he meant if you can't if there's some reason that you think and it stops you from God nothing should separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus absolutely nothing nothing because neither height nor depth nor principalities nor things above nor things below nor heaven nor hell nor reality or imagination can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus that Jesus loves you that much he will not let you die he will bring salvation to you and bring you into eternal life if you just call on him that the Holy Spirit can do in you he will bring you to a place where you can call upon him and when you call upon the name of the Lord you shall be saved saved from your sin and saved from damnation